Welcome to the fourth video in our VEX and Robot C series. In this video, we're going to show you how to add loops to your program using natural language. Up until now, every time we've ran a program, it stopped. And it has to do with being able to get to this bottom curly bracket. That's in program. So every time your program can go through and reach this in curly bracket, it'll actually stop it. And you manually then have to go hit the start button again. So all of the engineers on this project have decided that we don't want to do that anymore and we now want to loop the project forever. So we need to add some type of structure insight here that will ask it to loop or repeat all of this code over and over again. So what I want to do is go up to this control structures. When I open up this folder you'll see that I have a second natural language. Different than the natural language that we've been using. This has to do with being able to control the program's movement, um, weights, until that kind of stuff. This natural language up here gives us the ability to repeat things a specific amount of time or wait until a unique condition. So I actually want this repeat forever. So I'm going to grab this repeat forever and drag it down right up at the beginning and let it go. As long as I'm inside task main then it should be okay. All right, the black word body is what I'm going to replace. The body is your code. So I'm going to delete the word body. I'm going to grab all of my code and I'm going to pull it up inside this repeat forever. I'm going to go ahead and hit delete. And now when I go ahead and do that fix formatting like I've been doing earlier, you're going to see that there's a little bit more to it. So when I say fix formatting, it now tabifies or aligns all of your curly brackets. So these two curly brackets here belong to task main. These two curly brackets belong to this repeat. So once task main is started up at this first one, it'll go inside here that says repeat forever. So now it'll go from this first curly bracket, it'll run the code, it'll go to the last curly bracket, and this will ask it to come back up to this condition, which is forever. So it will run what's inside those two curly brackets and never be able to get to line 33. If it can't get to line 33, then it will run forever. So let's see if the program that we have right now, just the way it was written, will continue to work. Because um, remember, we had some until releases that had to be added, and I think that's going to happen again. Because I've got an until touch, I've got a stop motor, and then an until touch again. So I think this is going to loop back and forth really, really quick. So we'll go ahead and say download to robot. I'll go ahead and hit start. It's at my first until touch, so I can press that one, and again, I can hold that one now indefinitely. I can let it go, and then I can press it again. But I'm never seeing the motor actually stop, because it's going through those last two until touches really fast. So I need to go ahead and add one more until release. So I'll copy this, stop the motor, until release and then it can come back up to this until touch again. You'll also notice every once in a while it doesn't like these two banked together, this until release and until touch. Um, sometimes you have to put a small wait, like a tenth of a second or so, in between some of these, but I think this will be fine. So we'll go ahead and download Robot and we'll start it. So we now should be able to start the motor and stop the motor and start the motor, stop the motor. As many times as we want. Okay, so say we wanted that to happen only for a specific amount of time, how would that be different? Or not time, per se, for counts, because um, time would be a completely different thing. So if I come back to that control structures and go to natural language, I have one that says repeat number of times. Um, so how is that different? Well, it's not really that different. All I'd have to do is repeat, replace the word number of times with 10. Um, now once that happened 10 times, it would then end that code. It would come down to our end structure, um, our end of the task main structure, and it would end. That's, that's it. So repeating forever and repeating for a certain number of times is really not that complicated at least while we're using natural language. 